All right, guys, we are back. Um, you can see we've got the gantry and we've got the main frame. We've got some electronics to handle. Um, quite a bit of wiring. Let's go through these real quick. This is, these are the motor wires, like we identified before. That's interesting, there we go. Should have three motor wires. One is attached to the gantry and three others, X, Y, Z or YZ and E. So these are designated longest, middle, short, and they're actually designed for the motors to be twisted at different angles. That's why you don't see a consistent change in their length. Um, we'll go ahead and start plugging these in. Longest one. There. Second longest. Our third longest. Oh. Let's plug in straight. And the shortest. Alright. So we got four motor wires. Um, and these guys are all heading this direction. Check. Um, you also have this guy. What is this thing? This thing is a fan extension. It is over a meter long and it has a, I believe this is called a, uh, a JST PH 2.0 plug, um, something like that. Maybe it might be a 2.5, I don't recall, or maybe it's one point, I think it's 2.0 though, but it is what plugs the fan in. Um, so the red is the blue. So I'm thinking in my mind, black is ground. So green is ground. I tried to maintain that if I could. Green ground or black ground. All right. Um, so what we're going to do to start with is we are going to pull the rubber band, thread this guy on. So you guys can see that. Yeah. So we're putting it on with the small facing up you should just thread on there nice and smoothly bring this guy down on top so okay if these are a little tight remember it's this one and this one that loosen and tighten the wheels you should just fall right onto it just like that Okay. The next step is we are going to take this loom. Ah, fan. Fan extension goes onto the fan that's on the hot end. So make sure to get that in the loom that we're getting ready to create. Okay, so we've got this big bundle of wires. And we've got a second set of wires that come from the X motor. Hot in bundle, X motor bundle. Um, we're going to start the loom at just the hot end, but the loom is also going to include the Teflon. So you can press the fitting on. And it might already be threaded into. Might already be threaded into the hot end, so I'm not really sure. This definitely needs to be. Make sure it's in the frame. Yeah. Make sure this is seated in here. Ah, like such. This all bundles together. You can use a twist tie down low to get it started. Okay, it's got these all twist tied. This is the frame. This is all that you should need to get down to the extruder. So you don't have to start way down low. You're basically just going to start wrapping. This doesn't have to be pretty, but the prettier the better. 
cleaner look to it. I did smaller loom in the past, and uh, it was took a long time and it was really difficult. This stuff seems to move really fast. Okay, next we have to intercept the X motor wires. I remember we didn't include that in the hot end loom. These are two different looms, but we're going to merge them together about halfway. And the links from here to here and from here to here should be about the same. I would, I would say somewhere about the halfway mark is about right. Double check. You can check the... Ooh, forgot one of the wires from the motor. Make sure you get all the wires from that X motor. Um, if you are planning on changing out the proximity sensor for um, the mill or for the laser cutter, you may not have this proximity sensor here. Instead, you may have a, a, a limit switch over here or over here that hits. So you may want this removable. If you do want to be able to pull off the proximity sensor, um, and the limit switch over here, if you want to be able to remove both of these so that you can pull off the hot end, then these should be loomed separately. Um, it should be outside of this main loom. Otherwise, you'll have to undo this loom down the road whenever you want to switch out tools. Um, but for the sake of this being a 3D printer build, we're just going to focus on it being a printer. I'm not worry about anything else. May incorporate some kind of a large plug that connects in all the components as needed down the road. But should be fine. Finish out your loom. And you should be pretty close to this Teflon tube being about right there. Now you notice how it holds the entire assembly here is being held up out of the way of the table, which way the table would move. So this loom shouldn't come in contact with anything, hopefully. We are changing this a little bit. We are running all our wires down this direction. So we're gonna just go ahead and plug that in. You shouldn't need to cut this tube. I mentioned that you do in a different video but as of right now, I've changed that where you don't have to. Um, all right, um, next I'm going to use just a twist tie. Had a random one laying around. You, there might've been an extra one from something. And because we're just kind of testing, I'm going to try to keep these grouped pretty well together. Look at that, guys. Starting to look pretty close, right? Got a bunch of wires, motor wires coming forward. This one going down this way. This is your Y limit switch. Um, looking at all this, the idea is that all of these wires come far enough over that this can be slid out pretty far before you hit the limits of what they can reach. That way this can be worked on. And that's kind of the whole whole deal, the distance deal. Some stuff we extended specially for that. Like the hot ends wires were extended like 150 millimeters just to make sure that we had plenty of room. I mean we could have cut this shorter and tightened everything up and made it more challenging. Um, but we wanted to make sure there's on room to work on stuff. <clears throat> um, it does get a little tight under this table here, but we're going to go ahead and start. Um, first thing we're going to do is identify motor wires. So this is your table motor, which is Y. And you could take a piece of tape and mark this with a Y if you want to. That's probably a Y wise decision. <laughs> um, this connector, all the motor connectors have red on the left. So it goes into the middle set. Okay. 
It goes into the middle of the stepper drivers. This one is your Z motor. So I just push and pull. There it is. Try not to get it too tangled in the mass. Z is at the very end over here. Again, red to the left. It can go in either set of four. Remember how I mentioned this can run two motors? It can go either one. Your next one is E, your extruder. It's this guy. Your E is on the back, on the left. Again, red to the left. And then your X is last. We know that's coming down from above. Where is this at? Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Make sure we try to watch out for any other stray wires. Again, red to the left. Really make sure that you caught all four pins on each of those motor wires. Okay. What else do we got here? Um, pulling on this guy, I can see that it is the Y limit switch. Um, I used to run right through back here, but now I'm bringing around front, so these are a little bit, gonna be a little tight. We'll make them work though. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back, slide this in. And remember how I was talking about those three sets? Well, these two wires are gonna go on the backmost set of pins in the column on the X-Men, Y-Men, or I'm sorry, X-Men, X-Max, Y-Minimum would be the third column right here. Okay, so this is kind of a, a hard way to hold the printer without it tipping over like that. Um, but you can really clearly see where everything's going. So I'm going to go ahead and try to assemble it like this. Um, let's grab another set of items. Let's see. I know that is my hot end wiring. I know the white wires are thermistor. <laughs> okay. It's kind of a, a little bit of a rat's nest here from the loom. So I'm going to try to clean this up real quick. Okay, these are the fan extension. So that would go to either D9 or constant 12 volt. Um, the next thing would be maybe. Yeah, it's kind of a mess, huh? The next thing would be let's go ahead and separate separate the power wires. Hmm. Huh. And thermistor wires. Now these guys are kind of Okay, we'll just do it that way. Okay, so this would be, I know this is the X limit switch because it's red and black, red and black. Um, and then the Y limit switch is blue and green. So on the printer, um, that's going to go, two wires go into the back. And X minimum is the first set. So you see it going in right there. And that's done. This is the proc or the thermistor. Remember I was telling you there are T0, T1, T2. So the far, this far set of pins is going to be the hot end. The next set is the heated bed. So heated bed wire should click right into there. We'll do that last. The next thing that goes in is going to be the, we'll go ahead and do the Z proximity sensor. So the Z proximity is yet one more set of pins further over. 
or skip in another set and it will be it'll look something like that I believe the uh, signal is the first and then ground so blue is signal green is ground I believe it specifically has to go that way blue green and then it's left open because that 5 volt in the back instead of using 5 volts on the proximity sensor we are using a 12 volt feed off of this terminal all right so once all of those are plugged up we also have some power wires and I've got a phone call I'm gonna finish plugging in these power wires into the D10 these two screw terminals and I'll get right back with you